So I posted on Facebook recently asking people what they would want to see in the next tutorial and Pony Winterheart, who drew this amazing piece of art uh, that was terribly flattering, you can see it here. She had posted mental blocks. She wanted to find out how to defeat them. And at first I was like, Psh, no, I am God. I have no mental blocks. But then I realized, no, I'm, I'm actually a human, just like you. And I do have many, many mental blocks. I have a history. And so I want to share my knowledge and my history and teach you to defeat the terrible, terrible thing pole dancers deal with constantly. So first off, we've got to figure out what a mental block is. This is a mental block. It is also a very dirty pole. Anyway, let's go to a very reliable source and find out what a mental block is. Wikipedia says, it's a repression of painful thoughts or an inability to continue a train of thought like in the case of writer's block. A similar phenomenon occurs when one cannot solve a problem in mathematics when one would normally consider it simple. That is a terrible definition. Let's use this definition instead. You should be able to do it, but for some reason in your head, you can't do it. And it's really frustrating. Unfortunately, when talking about overcoming mental blocks, it's mostly me talking. So to make it interesting, here is some raw milk ice cream, honey sweetened, is actually healthy for you. Here's my pole in my house. I don't know why that's relevant. And here is Sushi the Chinchilla. His name is actually Sushi. Hi, Sui. Say hi to everyone. You may be wondering how those three things go together, the ice cream, the pole, and the chinchilla. Well, just so you know, that is my mental block. I would like to shoulder mount while eating raw milk ice cream while holding on to a chinchilla. No easy feat. I believe it's possible, and so I will not let any mental block get in my way. When making a plan, start with a concrete skill that you already feel comfortable doing. Slowly ramp up the difficulty from there, being specific about each step so that you begin a pattern of success. As each achievement breeds confidence, your momentum will continue to grow, and soon you will be unstoppable. Visualization is well researched. By visualizing, you develop as if physically training without risk of injury or failure. I rarely actually train. I play. I don't repeat a technique over and over to get it unless I'm really close. If I don't have it, I come back at a later time. But here's the thing. In my free time, I'm visualizing in exquisite detail. Every part of my body and every step of the technique needs to be clear in my mind. By doing so, I am gaining muscle power and my neurology is changing to facilitate that skill. Most power gains comes from neurological development anyway, not mass. This means you can virtually work out by only thinking about working out. Wow, right? Oh, and if you're scared of technique, try holding a deep breath while visualizing. I'll talk more about that in the next section. Let's say you're going to go for it, but before you do, get your body in a sympathetic state. Use your fight or flight reflexes to your advantage. Not only will you get acute focus from a sympathetic state, but your reaction rate improves, your blood supply to your extremities increases, your power, adrenaline, and stamina all benefit as well. The deer in headlights freezing reflex will diminish because your body knows it has to perform to survive. In other words, pump yourself up. Yell, scream, do whatever it takes, you are going to do this. Oh, and that's why holding your breath while visualizing helps as a preemptive reading technique. Have a reward in mind that's positive, healthy, and reinforcing. Don't make your reward something too small because that won't motivate you enough. And don't make your reward something too great because then you'll probably run out of money and you'll make your goals smaller just to get more stuff. In the same way, you can have a punishment for failure. But in athletics, I personally think the punishment of the failure itself is quite enough. So don't be like Dobby. It's not cool. And it's a little bit disturbing. Now it's time to go for it. You've prepared mentally, you've visualized, and you've trained up physically for this moment. Now get it on your first try. Full commitment, because here's the thing. The lack of commitment is usually more dangerous than the commitment itself. You'll be a lot closer to safety going all out than stopping halfway. You're being safe by trying your best. Make that your mantra. If you don't get it the first time, chances are that if you've prepared correctly, you didn't do so bad. So go again. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe and know that I am a very normal person. I promise.